Isn't that awesome? Hello and welcome to In the Kitchen with Matt. I am your host, Matt Taylor. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make homemade mozzarella cheese using really cheap milk. Let's get started. Down below in the description box, you'll find a list of the ingredients and their amounts. Now, for the ingredients here, I just have this cheap store brand. This is Kroger brand whole milk. And this is just normal pasteurized milk. Make sure that the milk is not ultra pasteurized because that won't work. And this was like under two bucks at the store. Pretty awesome. And then I have some citric acid and you can find this in the canning section of your supermarket. And then I have some junket rennet tablets. Usually found um, where the jello or the instant pudding is found. You can find that there, it's really cheap. And then I have some cheese salt and I just bought this online. You can use normal salt, but cheese salt is definitely the way to go. If you're gonna be making, if you're gonna be making this all the time, then I recommend, recommend getting some cheese salt. And then here um, I have a couple of tablespoons of water to go with my quarter tablet of rennet. I have a quarter cup of water to go with my three quarters of a teaspoon of citric acid. And then I have a half a teaspoon of cheese salt in that little bowl. And then I also have a thermometer. You definitely are gonna to wanna to use a thermometer because the temperatures need to be fairly precise for this. Then I have some gloves that I'm gonna be using for stretching the cheese in the hot way. And then I have some cheesecloth then I have some little gloves here as well. So let's head over to the stovetop and we're gonna heat up the milk and we wanna heat it to 88 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit, which is right around 31 to 32 Celsius. Let's pour our milk right in there. And this half gallon of milk is right around 1.9 liters. And I have the burner set to medium low. We want to gently heat up the milk. And while I'm waiting for the milk to heat up, I'm gonna take that little quarter tablet of that uh, junk and rennet, and I'm going to just take, take a spoon and just kind of crush it in this little bowl here. Because we wanna just make sure it's crushed so it'll just dissolve easier in that water. But we're not gonna add the water to it yet. And I'm just gonna go and just stir occasionally just to make sure that the milk heats up equally or evenly. Fun fact, original mozzarella is made with buffalo milk. So if you can get your hands on buffalo milk, definitely use that. And sometimes this is referred to as buffalo mozzarella. And if you have goat's milk, you can make this with goat's milk as well, and it'll be the same steps as I'm showing here. Okay, we are at 88 degrees Fahrenheit. Perfect, and that took right around nine to 10 minutes on medium low. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn the heat down a little bit. I don't want it to get much hotter than this. I'm gonna take my citric acid, three, qu three quarter teaspoon of citric acid and combine it with a quarter cup of filtered water. You can use tap water, but I always use filtered water just because my tap water is terrible. Now let's just give this a mix, okay? So it dissolves. And once you dissolve that citric acid in the water, I'm going to just pour it in the milk and we'll just give it a few stirs. We just wanna incorporate it really well into this milk. And you can see it's already starting to curdle a bit. That's great. Now I wanna do the same thing with my rennet. I'm gonna add the two tablespoons of water to that. And then I'm just going to mix this around just to get that rennet to dissolve. Okay, now I'm gonna pour that in and then I'm just going to give that a good stir. Also, I'm gonna turn off the heat. So just stir this in gently. You want that rennet to be completely incorporated. So you're gonna be stirring it for about 20 to 30 seconds. And I'm gonna cover this now and we are going to just make sure that it's off the heat and we will let this sit here undisturbed for one to two hours, okay? And that's gonna give plenty of time for those curds to develop. All right, it's been about an hour, a little bit more than an hour actually. And I'm going to remove the lid. Look at that, awesome. The curd has form, formed, 
nicely. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the curd and I'm going to just come down and do slits and make the go down all the way to the bottom and make it about a half an inch to an inch apart. And then I'm just gonna go this way. And now I'm gonna set my heat to medium low. And then we're gonna heat the curd and the whey to about 108 Fahrenheit or 42 Celsius. And while we do that, we're going to also just kind of gently wiggle and turn the pot just so that curd can move around. And then we'll also go in and just stir a little bit. We don't want to break up the curd too much, but we do want to keep it from like getting scorched on the bottom of the pan. And we want to, once we get to the temperature, we want to cook the curd for about 15 minutes. And once we've heated that curd up, what we're going to do is we're going to remove it from the whey. And I'm just taking a slotted spoon. I'm going to go in here and just pick that curd up. And then put it over here in a um, strainer that I have lined with some cheese cloth. And then you can also use like a little strainer like this to come in here and scoop out all the little pieces. And because this is cheap milk, you're gonna see a lot of little smaller curds as opposed to if you use a good quality milk or even raw milk, the curds will be a lot nicer. Okay, now our whey, we're gonna take over to the burner and we want to set the heat to about medium low to medium and we wanna heat it up to about 175 to 180 Fahrenheit. And that way we're going to immerse our curd ball once we drain this in that. And that's how we're gonna stretch it. Otherwise you could use the method that I use in my other video where you use the microwave to do that. But I wanted to show a more traditional method that doesn't use the microwave. All right, so we want to drain this cheese. And so you can just let it sit here for a little little bit and let that whey drain. I can gather it up in our cheesecloth here. I'm gonna just come in here and just help it along by squeezing it. Because we wanna get quite a bit of moisture, quite a bit of that extra excess whey out of our curd ball. Okay, and so what you're left with is like a little ball of cheese. Sometimes you'll get more than this, but it's about eight. It'll be between eight to 10 ounces of cheese. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda just break it apart like this, and then sprinkle in this salt, that cheese salt, and just kind of knead it in to the cheese really well. Now over to that hot whey. And then I put on my food grade kitchen gloves. These are also like uh, cheese gloves, specifically for being able to touch hot liquids. And I'll just touch check the temperature of this whey. And it's right about there, almost there. And what we'll do is we'll take this ball and immerse it in there for about 15 to 20 seconds. And just remember, the better quality the milk, the more cheese you will get as well. And then I'm gonna pick this up just let it stretch a little bit. Still not melted enough. You can also add salt right to this whey, which will help flavor the cheese. We'll stretch it. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? And we'll just put it back in there to heat it up some more. Look at that stretch. Amazing. 
Okay, you don't need a lot, five, six stretches, and then we're going to just shape it into a ball, okay? Nice smooth ball, just kind of cupping it underneath, like that, and then into a bowl of cold water we go. We can also come in here for, with some of our salt and we can salt this water, which will further add some flavor, okay? And then you can store it right in this water if you want in the fridge overnight for two to three days or you can store it in the whey in the fridge. Um, and that'll just keep it nice and fresh. But it does taste better if you eat it the same day that you make it. And so you can make a Capri salad with it. You can just eat it as is if you want, or you can put it on some pizza. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take it out and I'm gonna cut a little piece off and give it a taste. Look at that. See that's how stretchy it is already? <laughs> awesome. Mmm. Like it tastes really, really good. It's amazing how good this tastes from just a cheap half gallon of milk. Mmm. And now, what I want to do is I'm going to pre my, preheat my oven to 450 degrees, 500 degrees around there, and I'm going to make a little tiny pizza and just show you how well this cheese melts. And now I'm just going to use some Boboli personal size uh, pizza crust. Um, not normally what I would do for pizza, I would make a nice homemade crust and I have a really good uh, recipe for just a, home, a perfect homemade pizza dough. Click that little eye up there in that corner and you'll find that pizza dough recipe. It's so good. So I'm just going to put a little bit of sauce on here. And typically with fresh mozzarella like this, you don't really... Um, shred it. You could chill it and then shred it, but it normally what you'll do is you'll just take pieces of it and you just kind of just pull it apart. And you'll just put little pieces on like this. And you might be thinking, oh, that's a lot of work for just a little eight to 10 ounce ball of mozzarella cheese. Yeah, it is quite a bit of work and you don't get a whole lot of cheese from it, but it's so fun to do. It's not something that I do all the time, but it's fun to know how to do it. And it's fun if you have some time to kill. And then again, any leftover cheese that you have, you can store it in this salty water in the fridge. And it'll keep it nice and fresh for a couple of days. You can also wrap it with plastic wrap and put it in the fridge, but it tends to dry out more when you just wrap it in plastic wrap. Now my oven is heated to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. Into the oven it goes. Um, for 8 to 12 minutes until the cheese is the cheese is nice and melted onto that step That cheese is melting great As you can see the cheese has melted uh, pretty well It doesn't melt the same as the dry aged shredded mozzarella that you might get at the supermarket So I'm gonna just remove this And then we can cut it Just smells a little differently, but it's still stringy when it's hot. As it cools down, of course, um, that's a different story. And there you go. That is how you make homemade mozzarella cheese using cheap milk. Again, if you use better milk, higher quality milk, the results will be even better than this. But you can use cheap milk to make cheese if that's all that you have. I'm Matt Taylor. This has been another episode of In the Kitchen with Matt. Thank you for joining me. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or requests, put them down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thumbs up, down the corner, press it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos. Take care. Time for me to dive into this. Oh yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. Mm.